In Escape from Tarkov, it doesn't matter if you're brand new or have been playing for years. You'll always be asking yourself, what are the best guns to use? What is up gamers? My name is God King and welcome to my very first Escape from Tarkov video. Today, I'm going to show you why these four guns are some of the very best picks when you're going through those early levels of Escape from Tarkov. As of right now, I stream on Twitch Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights with the occasional Sunday afternoon. I love it if you stopped by and said hello. With Tarkov wiping before the new year, everyone in the game will be forced to restart their progress at level 1. With weapons, ammo, and armor being extremely limited, understanding which gear to take into raids will give you an edge over the other players when trying to complete tasks and extract so you can level up your PMC as fast as possible. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I will not be going into the mechanics and comparisons between ammo and armor. For those of you who don't already know, Escape from Tarkov has ballistic mechanics that are some of the most complex in any video game to date. So not only are there already videos that can explain this much better than I ever could, but I also don't want to flood your brain with too much information. I'm just here to give you the quick breakdown of these weapons and their respective ammo choices. Also, near the end of the video, I'm going to share with you two additional beginner tips to help you survive more raids and win more gunfights. So let's dive right into it. To showcase these weapons and what they can accomplish in the early game of Tarkov, I tested them against the two most common armors that everyone can buy at level 1. The first is the Paka, a level 2 body armor made of Aramid with 85 armor points. The second is the Yule, a level 3 armored brig made of Titan with 80 armor points. We also tested these weapons against the most common helmet used in Tarkov, the SSH-68, also known as the PP helmet, a level 3 helmet made of armored steel, 30 armor points, and has a high ricochet chance. I grabbed some buddies, stocked up on these armors, and we started testing. The first gun we're going to showcase is the Mosin, an absolute powerhouse in the world of Tarkov due to its high penetration and damage stats that let you kill most players in 1-2 to two shots. Both the Mosin and its ammo can be bought from proper level 1. There are three different versions of the Mosins available at this point, the Sniper, the Infantry, and the Infantry Carbine. The Mosin Sniper comes with a 3.5 powered scope, but is only available via barter trade for 5D batteries and 8 AA batteries. The Mosin Infantry and Carbine are nearly identical with only a couple notable differences. Mosin Infantry has a lower ergonomic stat of 12, while the Carbine sits at 22. This means the Carbine will have slightly faster aim down sight time and will allow you to hold your ADS for a longer period of time before needing to rest. However, the carbine's accuracy is a little bit lower, which means you run a slightly higher risk of missing those carefully aimed, long-ranged headshots. With the prices of the two versions being so close, it's really going to be up to you to decide which one feels better to you and your playstyle. Now, you may or may not be aware of this mechanic in Escape from Tarkov, depending on how much you've played the game. In other FPS games, the guns have their own damage stats which determine how many shots it takes to secure the kill. In Tarkov, however, it all comes down to the ammo you use. The Mosin, for example, fires a 7.62x54R cartridge. At proper level 1, you could buy the LPS GCH round for less than 400 rubles. At the time of recording this video, LPS GCH has a penetration value of 42, with a damage value of 81. For those of you new to Tarkov, this means that LPS GCH will reliably two-tap all armors of class 1 through 3, which are the most common armors in the early stages of a wipe. Here are the results of our Mosin testing. After one shot to the thorax, the pack was damaged to 42.8 out of 50 armor points, leaving the thorax with 4 out of 85 health. This means that unless you are at impossibly long distances, the Mosin and the LPS round will two-tap anyone wearing a Paka as long as you hit their chest. After one shot to the thorax, the Yule was damaged to 64 out of 80 armor points, leaving the thorax with 6 out of 85 health. Again, this means the results are the same as the Paka. As long as both shots hit the chest, the Mosin will not need more than two shots to secure the kill. Instant death. Look, unless the round ricochets off the helmet, it's going to kill them. No further test. The second and third gun we'll be showcasing are the OPSKS and the 762 VPO. The OPSKS can be bought at Jaeger level 1, which can be paired with extra attachments to match your playstyle. PSO 4x scope can be bought from proper level 1 and attached directly to the SKS for long ranged engagement. The ability to use the scope consistently makes the OP SKS probably the best option for long range shots in those early levels of Tarkov. Or you can purchase a Cobra reflex sight also from proper level 1 for those closer ranged fights. 
However, with only a 10 round capacity, the OPSKS struggles in actual firefights. You can, however, purchase a different magazine from Peacekeeper Level 1 to increase the round capacity from 10 to 30. But I found that these are crazy popular early wipe with a lot of players and are often sold out. I'd recommend purchasing 5 30 round magazines at the Trader Reset and using one at a time, simply top loading the SKS after every fight, mainly focusing on those long ranged engagements. The VPO 136 has a few options for those looking for the same damage potential in closer ranged fights. Purchased from Skier Level 1 and offering the same semi auto capabilities, the VPO comes with one 30 round mag. You can buy additional 10 round magazines for insanely cheap, allowing you to reload your weapon throughout prolonged firefights. After each fight, simply reload your 30 round magazine and slap it back into your VPO after each fight. The VPO also offers a few extra attachments that will be more familiar with other FPS games. Purchased from Skier Level 1, you can buy the AK Bastion Dust Cover and either the Walter or PLAD Red Dot sights. This will offer a much clearer sight picture and to land more shots and win more fights. Additionally, you can purchase the AK-100 Polymer Handguard from Proper Level 1 and attach a foregrip and tactical device to your VPO. This will allow you to have better weapon stats and your choice of flashlight or laser sight to your weapon. Both of these weapons fire one of the most popular ammos in the game, the 7.62x39PS cartridge. At the time of recording, the PS round sits at 35 armor penetration and 57 damage. This round is used because it dominates armor classes 1 through 3 and makes quick work of level 4 as long as you land your shots. The PS round can be purchased from proper level 1 and is one of the cheapest ammos in the game and it doesn't sacrifice penetration or damage value. For testing purposes, I'll show you the VPO for close ranged fights and the SKS for long ranged fights. After one shot to the thorax, the Paco is damaged to 45.9 out of 50 armor points leaving the thorax with 28 out of 85 health. This means that just like the Mosin, unless you are at impossibly long distances, the VPO and the PS round will two-tap anyone wearing a Paka as long as you hit their chest. After one shot to the thorax, the Yule was damaged to 71 out of 80 armor points, leaving the thorax with 38 out of 85 health. Again, this means the results are the same as the Paka. As long as both shots hit the chest, the VPO will not need more than two shots to net you a kill. Same thing, insta-kill. Again, unless the round ricochets off the helmet, it's going to drop them like a sack of potatoes. No more testing. To show you the long range capabilities of the SKS, I got out my trusty rangefinder and walked until I was about 100 meters from my target. I wanted to see if there would be enough damage drop off that would needed to be taken into account. At 100 meters, after one shot to the thorax, the Paco was damaged to 46.2 out of 50 armor points, leaving the thorax with 32 out of 85 health. By now, you get the picture, this is going to be a two shot kill. At 100 meters, after one shot to the thorax, the Yule was damaged to 71.7 out of 80 armor points, leaving the thorax with 44 out of 85 health. This meant the Yule was able to tank an additional shot. After the second shot, the Yule was damaged to 63.3 out of 80, leaving the thorax with 3 out of 85 health. Now this means that level 3 armor is going to be a little bit more viable when roaming around long distance maps, such as woods or shoreline. Now as long as you don't have potato aim like me and you don't miss your first two shots, the 762 PS round will penetrate through the helmet no problem. No further testing. The last weapon we'll be showcasing you here is the 45 UMP. A submachine gun with crazy low recoil and full auto capabilities, this is going to be your weapon of choice for those close to medium ranged fights. The UMP cannot actually be bought, but rather bartered from Peacekeeper Level 1 for 7 grey handled knives. The knives can be bought from the fence trader for a cheap price, making getting your hands on this gun a walk in the park. Granted, with the UMP being much more popular, it can sometimes be out of stock quite frequently. My advice? Buy 14 knives and barter for 2 UMPs every time the trader resets. Although the UMP will do just fine stock you can go back and buy those additional attachments I mentioned earlier doing the VPO build and slap those onto your UMP. A red dot sight and your choice of tactical device are going to be my top recommendations here as the UMP already has low recoil and better ADS time than most weapons. The ammo of choice is going to be the Match FMJ that you can purchase from Peacekeeper 1. For those of you new to Tarkov, Peacekeeper only deals with American dollars. 
not rubles. All you have to do is take one extra step and convert some of your rubles to dollars and you'll be good to go. By the time we're recording, Match FMJ offers 25 armor penetration with a whopping 76 damage, meaning that although it will slice through armor class 1 and 2, it's going to struggle against anything higher. However, this can be defeated by full auto capabilities. Sending more lead down range can brute force your way through levels 3 and 4 with very little issues. After one shot to the thorax, the pack was damaged to 48 out of 50 armor points, leaving the thorax with 26 out of 85 health. This means just like everything that came before it, you will two-tap your enemies at close range. After one shot to the thorax, the Yule was damaged to 75.9 out of 80 armor points, leaving the thorax with 69 out of 85 health. This meant the Yule could tank an additional close range shot. After the second shot of the thorax, the Yule was damaged to 71.8 out of 80 armor points, leaving the thorax with 24 out of 85 health. These results mean, against a Yule, the UMP will need 3 shots to down your target. Not much of an issue when you have a full auto death machine. Now here we had some interesting results. Up until now, the PP Helm was no match for anything we've previously mentioned before, which is kind of why I recommended them in the first place. However, against the UMP and match FMJ, the PP Helmet was tanking 1-2 to two headshots before my assistants succumbed to their injury. At first we thought maybe it was a ricochet, but it was kind of difficult to tell. Although results may vary, after the first shot, the PP Helm was damaged to 24.8 out of 30 armor points, leaving the head with 19 out of 35 health. The first shot results were pretty consistent, so I would say you can trust the helmet to stop one round, and occasionally Originally, you might tank a second. No further testing as of right now. Well, folks, there you have it. I hope now you can see why I recommend the Mosin, VPO, SKS, and the UMP to be the four guns you're going to use right away in Escape from Tarkov. Before I go any further, I want to ask you, yes, you, subscribe. I had tons of fun making this video, and at the end of the video, I'll let you know what you can expect from me next week. Now, I'm going to give some of you new players two tips that will help you survive more raids and win more gunfights. So let's dive right in. Tip number one, do not wear dark sunglasses in Tarkov. At Ragman level one, you can buy these Dunduck sunglasses, which claim to offer protection against flashbangs. The only problem is they're currently bugged and really have been since the beginning of Tarkov. They essentially make your eyes glow in the dark across long distances, making you an easy target for snipers. In foggy weather, this effect will be amplified, and it's kind of funny to see when someone else makes this mistake. Tip number two is for those coming from other games like Call of Duty, who know already how vital sound is when anticipating nearby enemies. In Escape from Tarkov, it's the exact same story. Purchasing the GSSH headset from Proper Level 1 will amplify your hearing and introduce you to the world of headsets Tarkov has to offer. I'm going to show you three tests we took with the GSSH headset. For the first test, I'm going to walk 100 meters away and have my assistant shoot an SKS into the air so you can hear the difference with and without this headset. For test number two, I walked 50 meters away and had my assistants walk and sprint at me, both with and without the headset. This part of testing was the most fascinating for me for two reasons. The first, because it shows just how important even the cheapest headset can be. And second, because when showing this video to my Twitch chat, everyone heard sounds at different distances. So what I'm gonna do is mute my audio and let you listen for yourself to these tests. And I want you to write in the comments below what distance you started hearing their footsteps. The third test I'm going to show you is the same kind of test when someone's walking through bushes. So sit back and enjoy the audio.
Well, there you have it, everyone. That's this week's video. Now, next week, I'm going to be diving more into all the headsets you can wear in Escape from Tarkov. I'll be running similar tests, so you'll finally be able to know which headset is going to work best with your own gaming setup. So make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know exactly when it comes to YouTube. Thanks for stopping by, and I hope to see you again next week.